Hello friends, in this video I am going to show you the new LoRaWAN GPS tracking device we designed for a client in Switzerland. This device is based on the same old Veltrack V2 GPS tracker design except a few changes. Uh, this GPS tracker was supposed to use the Murata CMW series module because the uh, client wanted to use it uh, since the, uh, this is the module that was recommended by Swisscom, a LoRaWAN network provider in uh, Switzerland. So we used that uh, module and uh, designed this board with the same uh, uh, a GPS module is used in the uh, Valtrac V2 GPS tracker which is the SIM 39EA. The SIM 39EA has uh, proved itself to be a good performer at a cheaper price. I also found this uh, Mobile Tech N39 GPS module. Uh, this is a newcomer in the market uh, which is 100% uh, compatible with the uh, uh, SIM 39EA module and it's also slightly cheaper than the SIMCOM uh, counterpart. Uh, this mobile tech company is, uh, I heard that it started by the founders of Simcom and uh, they have some footprint compatible modules uh, and uh, functionally compatible modules uh, for the very popular modules of Simcom like uh, Sim 800C, Sim 39EA, Sim 800 etc. These are uh, being sold by RK Electro Components uh, in Bangalore. Uh, uh, some of the mobile tech representatives had contacted me for trying out their modules and I ordered 5 of the samples and tried on these ports. Uh, the power input specification uh, was that it was supposed to work for a very long time and uh, run on a non-rechargeable C size uh, lithium battery. Uh, because uh, this is the one which uh, which fit the size and the capacity requirements. So this is a 3.6 volt uh, ER26500 uh, battery and uh, this is uh, of C size. And this comes with a capacity of about 9 AH that's 9000 milliampere hour which should be good enough to run for a few months. Now that's why we made provision for a keystone uh, made C size battery holder on the bottom side of the PCB. So this is the keystone battery holder. This will fit. And the battery will come like this. Uh, there was no size constant on this board, uh, so we made it small enough uh, uh, to hold the C-size battery holder. As you must have noticed, the board does not have an extra MCU on board because the Murata module has an internal inbuilt STM32L0 series MCU in which we can write our own firmware along with the embedded LoRaWAN stack. ST provides uh, ready to use uh, uh, libraries and code for which include the LoRaWAN uh, examples for end node application and uh, ping pong applications. This is based on the Cube MX platform which is quite easy to use and configure. We just interface the GPS module uh, to the uh, open UART1 interface of the module uh, of the STM32 and we also added a couple of chips uh, on the I2C bus uh, which is a LM75 temperature sensor and an FRAM chip. We also added a power MOSFET, this small part as you can see here is a power MOSFET. Uh, this is uh, used to control the power to the GPS module. Uh, and uh, we can reduce the power consumption to almost zero when there is no GPS uh, in locating uh, requirement. Uh, we also provided a slide switch here uh, which can be used uh, to uh, connect or disconnect the battery to the circuit. The USB micro USB connector provided here is it can be used for connecting to the USB port of this module and uh, it can also be used for programming purposes with a couple of zero ohm resistor changes. Uh, for the programming, we provided a separate uh, header connector. So these 2.54 mm connectors uh, are connected to the SW lines of the STM32 MCU on the module, which can be used to flash the firmware onto the MCU. And we provided a U.FL connector here. Uh, this can be used to connect this flex antenna for signal reception. We can also use a UFL2 SMA converter, which can be used. Uh, to connect a whip antenna. This uh, FRAM chip uh, was uh, uh, provided so that you can use it to save uh, logs or uh, locations if there is no signal available we, or we can just log the data for a while and then transmit the data once the you know the interval has elapsed. We added a optional 3 volt regulator which can be bypassed with a zero ohm resistor uh, in case if you want to operate it with a smaller battery 
like maybe a coin cell 3 volt battery whose voltage will not go above 3.3 volts. Since this uh, device uses the 3.6 volt battery, uh, the MCU and all the circuit operated 3 volts or 3.3 volts. So we use this small 3 volt regulator for uh, you know reducing the voltage to the operable levels. And we also uh, routed the second uh, UART port to the headers here, uh, which can be used to output the debug log data. And once we got the boards assembled, uh, the boards worked straight away without any modifications. And uh, we were able to run the peer-to-peer -peer firmware and the end node firmware directly without any problems. For a peer-to-peer -peer application, uh, we got two modules programmed with uh, ping pong firmware provided by ST and uh, took out for testing. It worked quite well uh, in line of sight. Uh, after it got some uh, buildings and obstructions in, in between, it stopped working and uh, we returned back. The modules worked for about one kilometer line of sight uh, with flex antennas on both sides. So these are the flex antennas that were used. The GPS accuracy was quite good both for the SIM39EA and N39. Uh, this map shows an, on the, the testing route we took and the pings that were received. For end node testing, we approached Tata Communication LoRaWAN department since they have already deployed the LoRaWAN network in majority of the cities. We were lucky that we, they had a network established in uh, Dharwad also and uh, uh, they gave a uh, end device specification document which says about the certifications uh, the device should have uh, uh, to uh, you know to use their network. The first is the LoRa Alliance certification, which is which the Mirota module already has. To tell about the LoRa certification, it's necessary to be a LoRa Alliance member to have a LoRa certification for your device, which costs a few thousand dollars. And if you have a membership, again you have to approach a LoRa One certification lab, which will again charge you for the certification. Now if you and me take a STM32 and SX1276 and, and build a LoRaWAN module, uh, we still have to go to the go and become a LoRaWAN Alliance member first and pay for the membership and then again uh, pay for the certification for the testing labs and uh, then your device will be LoRa certified. Uh, which is uh, disappointing uh, for startups because we will not have that much money to spend on certifications. The next certification is the WPC end device type certification. Uh, which again costs about 50k INR in India just to get uh, a device type identification for your device which is again a one more hurdle for the startups. Uh, next the device need to have a unique dev UI numbers which are uh, bought by module makers from IEEE uh, so that each device is unique on a network. Uh, but strangely Mirara didn't do it and uh, uh, we, we did not have the dev UI number for each device uh, but uh, Tata was kind enough to give us a couple of dev UI for testing purposes. We got up and running on the Tata LoRaWAN network uh, after programming the keys into the firmware. The devices started sending data in no time and it arrived on the Tata backend. Uh, they give us a dashboard login which we give wherein we can see the data that's coming from our devices and if the data was again forwarded to your servers and all properly or not. The data arrived in base64 format with the JSON encoding uh, which again needs to be parsed uh, on our backend. So what I did is I created a API on my Dream Factory backend and uh, linked it the TCL backend to my server. Once we were set up uh, the data arrived uh, on the TCL server in real time and uh, the signal coverage is also quite good in our city because my office is on the uh, little outskirts of the city uh, but still the LoRa signal is good enough here. The LoRa devices are looking quite attractive since they are quite low power compared to cellular modules. It's because the LoRa devices don't need to connect and register on network for like cellular modules uh, uh, which take a lot of time, about 15 seconds at least. This helps the LoRa devices in saving power in a low power applications. TCL recommends Melange modules so, uh, since they provide dev UI number and their modules are approved by Tata LoRa One Network. But I don't think they have a built-in SCM32 MCU. Uh, I hate to have a bigger module and again an extra MCU on board taking up more space. Uh, still uh, the price of the Melange modules is cheaper or at least 50% compared to the Mirota modules. Uh, the Melange modules uh, come at about 650 rupees each uh, and uh, uh, they do not have any LoRaWAN certification uh, and uh, they will be doing the certification on client's request uh, at an extra charge. And uh, the Murata on the other hand is quite expensive at about 1500 INR, uh, twice the price of the Melange modules. But they have an internal MCU which is quite useful and they are also of a, quite a smaller size also. So the, uh, the Melange modules are quite bigger and uh, they don't have an extra MCU on them. Uh, the only problem with Murata is that they don't have a dev UI number. 
so that's all for now uh, i will keep you guys posted on the further developments on the mobile track lora devices and on the tata lora network so if you if you need to try these devices you can place an order on valetron.com slash store and we will make some devices and ship it to you thanks for watching uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe